And WB to the first Unity game that I'm making. Well, well, I mean, it's not the first one. I made one following a Bracky's tutorial, which has some redeeming qualities, like the rad soundtrack you're listening to that I made. It's great. But I didn't bother to balance any of the levels. I didn't fix some of the major bugs, and I didn't monetize it in any way. Made it to get familiar with the Unity controls and scripting. But we don't talk about it past the link in the description. Moving on from here, I'm going to make this app for mobile, Android, sorry, and the title is going to be Remote Bowling. I did a search and I didn't find any other games by that name, so that's what we're going with. I started by making a bowling pin in Blender. It took a whole day, and I wish I could change some of the controls. They didn't have the key rebinding that I expected, but it worked. I used a reference image and then carved out the general basic pin shape, and I'm satisfied with it. So I brought the model into Unity, and I had huge problems, or tiny problems, with scale. As you can see, the pin is absolutely minuscule. Let's try focusing on it here, but it's, it's just tiny. And the way that I fixed that was this little checkbox over here, Convert Units, it took the Blender units and downscaled them. And so uncheck that, and it the scale works itself out. Then I started by coding the player controller and the camera follow script. The player moves forward automatically, but the player can use their controls to move horizontally on their own. Slap on some rigid bodies, lay out a couple of pins, and you got yourself game. Now I could release this right now, but you know I need better, so I coded in a lose condition. Touch any of the bad pins, and your player dies. I mean, your player dies, which locks up the controls. I also changed some movement variables, and I'll tweak those as I go. So I went forward and created a Trello board to keep track of all of the different levels and any extra twists I want to add, everything that I want in the project. I want to monetize this app with red, I mean ads, so there will be a scoring system and a screen that will display the player's score between levels as well as a banner ad. I like using tags to show priority, then have the list group the items into time-based sections. I marked a lot of the ideas with a stretch goal tag, so I'll implement them if I have time this week or if I feel like it as a post-release update. So, sometime between when I recorded these clips, I streamed with a friend and Streamlabs OBS changed the output resolution, so these are going to be a little bit blurry and I didn't notice until the editing phase, so I hope you can forgive my blatant lack of quality video making prowess. So moving forward, I put together a tutorial level with some floating ghostly text, and I left some spaces for future features in this level that I had planned or had ideas for. I went ahead and created a finish line and marked it as a trigger, created some transparent material for it, and moved on to the game manager. I gave the game manager a score manager script that updates the on-screen score and gives a thousand points for crossing the finish line. The score manager also stores a reference to the score text object that I'm using in the UI and the score manager script updates that every frame. As you can see, once you cross the finish line, it also locks up the player scripts and it gives you a thousand points. And that means I can check it off. Booyah. So I went and sorted the scenes a little bit. And I built the score screen scene. 
Then I messed around and learned how anchors worked, so my UI would actually stay put where I put it. This is an image object that I added to represent where the ad space would be, but I changed that to a panel, which I think is the correct way to use it later. So anchors, I found that they worked for keeping objects on the corners of the screen and scaling them appropriately. This is where I changed from an image to a panel and I added the continue button. So the game manager is what I will use to actually switch the scenes. So sprinkle in a bit of logic and some variables and the scenes live on the same street close enough to ride a bike to. Using the invoke command, you can run a function after a certain amount of time. So I used it to run the next level function after a certain amount of wait time after you run through the finish line. The project will be for Android, so I might as well switch to that build style, and so I did that here. I switched up the scenes so that the main menu is first. The start button will skip right to the scene with the build index of 2, and the levels will advance from there, and so I have the score screen build index of 1. I need the game manager to persist between scenes, so on a level victory, it can jump to the score screen and still remember where the next level is. So I fix that with the don't destroy on load function and a singleton instance. I built the actual main menu scene and linked the button to the game manager's scene manipulation functions. Then, because the score manager script needs to have that reference to the score display text object, I attempted to dynamically add it on scene load, so that's an hour I won't get back. I first tried to find the text object from the score manager, but a don't destroy on load object doesn't run its start function when a scene loads. So after a lot of debugging and trying to make the text object call a function on the score manager, I decided APPROACH CHANGE! I think the text object was finding the game manager in the scene who would destroy itself, so none of the function calls persisted, and I eventually used the start function of the text object itself, with a bit of delay using the invoke function, to run the score manager's function to insert itself into the score text variable that the score manager uses as a display. And that way everything is connected on every scene load, so that each level the score is updating properly. Then I moved on to score pin collisions. I'm not sure you can store custom variables on a game object itself, so I made a script to hold an individual pin's hit state so the pin can only be hit once. The script also holds the pin's value, so there can be some pins worth more in hard to reach places. So you can see this pin's value is 100, and then when I start, the score is at zero. Moving forward and hitting one of the pins, the score updates to 100. And then 200 when I hit the next one. I tried running over the first pin that I hit a second time, and it looks like it doesn't work, but I actually collided with the pin that I brushed past, so the script is still good. Then again, passing the finish line gives a thousand points, and it locks up the controls. And then it jumps to the wrong scene, but I'll fix that later. I sorted the scripts into the script folder, and finally got to check off a bunch of items on the Trello board. Finished the win condition, and the title screen start button. Title screen in general also. But I still have to make the credits on the title screen and some links. And then I went and spliced together this video. Now I hope to finish this within a week and get it released. So stick around and I'll see you next time. I've got some editing to do.